Hello, Earth Sky friends. Welcome. I'm Deborah Bird back here to talk about hurricane season. And I'm pleased to be here with Rachel Dunsey, who is a broadcast meteorologist and climate reporter for CBS 17 in Raleigh, North Carolina. And she also reports on weather for Earth Sky. Rachel, hi. Hi, Deborah. Thanks again for having me. And, you know, talking about weather is pretty much my favorite thing. So let's just keep doing it. <laughs> All right, absolutely. So um, what can we expect for hurricanes in the month ahead? Yeah, so August is one of those months where we really start to see activity start to ramp up. So obviously the big thing came out in May, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which is the parent organization of the National Hurricane Center, put out their hurricane forecast and said, we're expecting another more active than average season. Um, and then we had a few systems, we've had a few storms here and there, we've had three named storms, but not a lot in the past few weeks and really not a lot over this past month. So people, as they always do, they get a little antsy, they get a little itchy and like, but wait, wasn't it supposed to be an active season? You know, aren't we supposed to start seeing a lot more activity? And yes, that is the case, but it's not unusual to go from the beginning of June through about July and not have a lot of activity. So if you go to the National Hurricane Center's website, which is what we have up right now, they say they're not expecting any tropical cyclone activity, any tropical storms or hurricanes or waves in the next seven days. This is not that unusual for this time of year. We really start to see a quick uptick in activity, typically during the month of August. But remember, peak hurricane season is typically the middle of September. So if we don't have a lot in the beginning of summer, that's not necessarily unusual. It doesn't necessarily mean the forecast is a bust. Um, it just means that things haven't quite reached their peak potential yet. So I don't know why people ask for tropical systems and hurricanes. They're a huge pain. Um, they can be incredibly <laughs> devastating as well. Um, so let's just enjoy the fact that things are calm right now and know that in the next few weeks to the next month and a half, things could potentially get pretty active. And, you know, my best friends live in Galveston, Texas. Mm. And so they, you know, they are very subject to hurricanes because Galveston is an island. Right. And they have situations sometimes where the storm surge will go over the entire island. Right. And so and they're older. And so when hurricane season comes, what they've done now is they've bought a little house that's inland. And when hurricane season comes, it's because it's hard for them to evacuate quickly mm -hmm. enough. And so they go to their other house, but they're not going until the second week of August <laughs> this year because it's been such a quiet season. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So so is there any I mean, is there any activity at all out there in the Atlantic? Not so much in the Atlantic right now. You know, there are always a few tropical waves and we were actually monitoring a couple um, within the past few weeks and they were both in the Gulf. You being in Texas, you were probably hearing a lot about it as well. They had these areas that were uh, tropical waves that were really trying to get their act together and they were really trying to become tropical systems. But what happened, at least with these in particular, um, one I think was just last week and one was... I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, they were during the month of July. Um, but what happened is they kind of, for lack of a better phrase, ran out of runway. Um, if these tropical systems tried to develop too close to land, that land is sort of friction. You know, it kind of... Uh, throws off the flow, so to speak, and it makes it harder for them to develop and, and get that clear center of circulation. Tropical systems don't like friction. They don't like being over land. And that's why a lot of times after you see a tropical storm or a hurricane make landfall, it very quickly starts to fall apart. One, it's lost its source of energy, which is, remember, the warm ocean water. Um, and then also that land gives it just enough friction to where it starts to tear it apart a little bit. So these systems, because they're not very strong to begin with, because they're still developing, They've got that warm water right there in the northern portion of the Gulf Coast, um, but it gets just a little bit too close to land, and that's sort of interacting how it develops, and that's why it dumped a lot of rain uh, in the Gulf Coast, you know, brought a lot of that tropical moisture, but it didn't actually get that center of circulation, wasn't actually able to develop into a true tropical system. So they were trying to develop, something was trying to happen, um, it just didn't quite have enough space, didn't quite have enough room for it to to 
develop and become a depression or a name, so to speak. So um, things have been trying to develop. Again, there's nothing really out there right now in the Atlantic, um, but it probably won't be long before we at least start to see a few more waves that we need to keep an eye on. But the predictions for this year were for a higher than active, a more active than usual hurricane season. And why is that? Yeah, so part of that is the phase of El Nino, La Nina. Um, so we're not necessarily in either El Nino or La Nina right now. It's what's called a, a neutral phase. So it's, again, not El Nino or La Nina. And so that creates a little bit of uncertainty. Um, but another thing that uh, forecasters have been looking at are obviously our ocean temperatures are really warm they are warmer than average yet again across the main development regions across the atlantic as well as in the gulf waters are always typically warm in the gulf because it's a little more shallow compared to the atlantic but again they're also very warm we're also expecting wind shear to be just a little bit lower so if you have lower wind shear you're not having those winds that are tearing apart these tropical systems so that could allow for more development as as well. Um, and then also they're keeping an eye on the West African monsoon, because um, as we get those waves that come off of Africa, those can be the start of our tropical systems as they march across those warm waters of the Atlantic, where there's a little less wind shear, and they could typically develop. So it's a lot of different factors, but those are a lot of the main ones um, that people talk about are uh, El Nino or La Nina, as well as water temperatures, and then like wind shear, in addition to the West African monsoon. Okay, so what's going on in the Pacific? Let's look at this guy. Yeah, so that is, I believe, Iona, um, which Iona. was yeah, a major hurricane. It was about 700 miles south of Hawaii with everything else going on. Of course, with the tsunami, I think Iona was the least of their problems, but it was at one point forecast to become a category four hurricane. They were expecting it could have winds up to 140 miles per hour. That did not happen. It was a major hurricane, and I believe at its peak had winds of a about 125 miles per hour, um, but it has now since started to weaken. I uh, believe it is only a tropical storm this morning as I last checked with the 11 o'clock advisory. Um, so it is starting to weaken. It's still out there, but it's not impacting land. Obviously there's not a whole lot in the central Pacific except for Hawaii and some other smaller islands, um, but it did stay away from land, which was good. Um, so we had Iona, which was a big talker, unfortunately did not impact land. And I believe there's also tropical storm Gill, um, which is more in the eastern Pacific Ocean, um, but is expected to move sort of into the central Pacific as well. That is expected to become a hurricane, but again, should stay away uh, from the Hawaiian Islands. So starting to see a little more activity in the Pacific as well. Um, so we'll enjoy the, the fact that things are calm right now in the Atlantic. So tell us, what should we do? The folks who live on coast, what, what should we do to prepare? It's always better to be prepared now. And, and they say, you know, kind of like your friends who live in Galveston, they leave a little bit earlier because it's harder for them to do so. Um, you want to prepare right at the beginning of hurricane season or before hurricane season ever starts, because if within the next few days you find out a tropical storm or hurricane is going to impact you and you need to get out, you're probably not going to have as much time to get everything together. So while things are calm, yeah, it's a great time to, to get your hurricane kit together, especially if you do live on the coast. You should have plenty of water for you and every person in your household. Um, also, if you have any pets, do not forget about your pets. People sometimes don't think about taking them when they evacuate. Remember, your pets are a member of your family. You have to take them with you. So bring water for them, bring food for them as well as yourself. Make sure you have any medications that you, your family, or again, your pets may need. Take all of that with you. Make sure you have a big supply of that as well. Non-perishable foods. So things that aren't going to spoil very easily. Things that you can eat without power in case you don't have power. And something that people don't always think about a manual can opener because if you have food in a can that you know you can still eat but if it doesn't have a pop tab how are you going to get it open it's going to be pretty difficult so you can go out and get those you know get them for a couple bucks at the store um throw that into your hurricane kit as well so you can get into any canned food and again some some pet food um is is a can as well that doesn't always have a pop tab so make sure you have that um 
old fashioned can opener for, for lack of better phrase, manual. That's the word I'm looking for, manual can opener. Um, so food, water, um, also make sure you have any like personal items, things that you may need like insurance policies if you don't have a digital copy of that. Um, also make sure you have some cash on hand in case the power is down for a long enough period of time where you may not have access to your bank or debit card or credit card systems may be just a little finicky because of, of lack of power, lack of cell service, things like that. And you can go to the National Hurricane Center's website. They have a great list of things that you can put into your hurricane kit and how you can also make sure that you are prepared. Um, and I always like to, to put this out there as well, just because it might be a quote weaker storm that's impacting you say it's downgraded to a category one hurricane or a tropical storm make sure you're focusing on the impacts that could impact you or your location because even a weaker hurricane even a weaker tropical storm can cause a lot of devastation i have a little bit of regency bias because i'm in north carolina recently we had tropical storm chantal it was a very weak tropical storm by the time it impacted us but the amount of rain that it caused rival to what we experienced in hurricane fran in 1996 which was a major hurricane when it hit us same with hurricane florence it was a major hurricane category four out in the atlantic it weakened to a category one by the time it made landfall in north carolina and it caused significant flooding that people are still recovering from uh six years later um so really focus on the impacts everyone gets caught up on how strong a system is we get it i understand um, but make sure you're really focusing on the impacts that it could bring to you uh, or to wherever you're going to be because every storm really is different Rachel, thank you so much. It's it's really good to get this reminder to be prepared for this stuff. So yeah. uh, I, I have been speaking with Rachel Dunsing, who's a broadcast meteorologist and climate reporter for CBS 17 in Raleigh, North Carolina. Rachel, thank you. Thank you so much, Deborah. Yeah, we are Earth Sky and I'm Deborah Bird. Uh, we're here every day uh, at midday in North America and we hope you'll join us again. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky. <laughs>